Thank you for having me. First and foremost, I want to thank the organizers of this summit for creating this platform to activate this difficult conversation. I think it is overdue to have this kind of conversation. And from what I deduced from the previous speakers and the panelists, reminded me about a story I read of an encounter between the former British Prime Minister, William Gladstone, and Michael Faraday, the inventor of electricity. Faraday was trying to explain to Gladstone the, his innovation about electricity. And Gladstone just keeping asking him, what is it for? What is it for? At the end, Faraday said, one day you will be able to tax it. So you can see the gap between innovators and those in government. It is a huge gap. That's years ago, not now. But having people like Alake in government can create a buffer for us to help translate the tech innovation to the people in government so that the policy makers can understand you, the change makers. But also, it is very important to understand the future of technology itself, the government, and then we talk about regulation. I think about it a little bit this way, about the future of technology. You all know about Alice in the Wonderland story. You know it, you remember Alice saw the white rabbit with clock rushing, saying that late, late on a very important day. And Alice rushed after the white rabbit into his rabbit hole. Two decades ago, we were all Alice. And we encountered this technology and we rushed after it to the Wonderland. Then what happened in the Wonderland? In the Wonderland, we learned we can search Google. But two decades now, we realized that we search Google, but not as much as Google searches us. Two decades ago, we assumed we used social media. But today, we realized social media uses us more than we use social media. Two decades ago, we thought these are free services. But now we realize that these big techs see us as a great human beings, free raw materials for extraction, production, commodification, and sales. They see us as a free raw material. Our most dangerous illusion in the Wonderland was we see these platforms as an unprecedented tool to improve democracy and increase freedom. But now, we realize that these unprecedented platforms are eroding democracy and diminishing freedom. Eight years ago, I was in the other side of the table, like you. 
I was brought up to believe that to succeed in business or in the world we are is to start and grow my tech business and take it to a global market. That time, I always look at how can I hack the law or stretch the law to get my product into the market. We built a cross-border remittance platform successfully and we tested it. It worked successfully. Within a month, we were able to settle over 100 million naira from the United Kingdom to Nigeria. And it works instantly using Bitcoin and other API technology. At that time, we had over 110 Bitcoin. But because of the challenges and the lack of the communications with the government, we failed. And we have to wind down the startup. Today, I'm on the other side of the government, but that's broadened my mind to start thinking, what is government? I believe all of you, if I say government, we mean democratic government. And this also reminded me about a story I read in 1787. As the American Constitutional Convention reached its conclusion, Benjamin Franklin was asked as he departed the Independence Hall, what type of government the delegates had created. He famously replied, a republic if you can keep it. That response resonated across the world and through ages. We have political parties with republic. We have nations named with republic, like Federal Republic of Nigeria. So what does a republic mean? Republicanism is not about the Republic Party in the United States because he made that statement almost 70 years bef before Republican Party was formed. A Republicanism is a political ideology that traces its root to the Roman times. The ideology opposes a social structure that allows groups to hold and exercise unaccountable power, domination over others. So most of our democracy is behind, is around this ideology. That's why it also not limited to kings, emperors, military dictators, but tech executives. Because today, the tech executives are more powerful than the political leaders. If you could remember, just before the last US election, President Biden was asking Facebook, would you mind just minimizing the disinformation in your platform? And Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the America, organized a summit with people like you leveraging on these big tech platforms to create services. 
and she and was, she was lobbying, lobbying them to talk to the big techs so that they can stop doing what make them more profitable so you can see how powerful this big tech are the government is begging them so so is it the type of democracy we want and this is totally against the republicanism ideology so, so that's why, that's why also, also if you look at the, at the history of the regulation regulating the big tech itself when it started we say it's a free space like in 1996 john barlow declared that declared the independence of cyberspace in davos where he predicted a new home, a cyber world without governments. And in 2013, Eric Schmidt, the former CEO and chairman of Google, also said cyberspace is an ungoverned space. But five years later, Mark Zuckerberg, when, when testifying before the Congress, he said, I'm not saying there should be no regulation. The real question, as the technology becomes important to people's life, is what is the right regulation? not whether there should be or not. So I think we are all on the same page with Mark Zuckerberg. From what I hear from the panelists, we all agree there should be a regulation. But what is the right regulation? And how can we get a right regulation? For me, getting a right regulation is beyond government sting in the offices and creating arm theory regulation. The government needs to work with you in the ecosystem to co-create the regulation. Because we know the regulation we are going to create is not a regulation we can get from textbooks of legal or political theories because the generation before us have never had to deal with this kind of situation we are dealing with so we are not going to get anything from them it's something we need to work together and create it and the only way we can achieve that is when we converse. Now we have started the conversation. How can we get a right regulation? So it's not about you, the players in the tech innovation ecosystem, to sit in your comfort zone and start blaming the government. That government is not doing the right things. Because the government doesn't even understand what you are doing. You need to come and explain to the government to understand what you are doing before the government can help you create the right regulation. So what are we doing as a government to achieve that? I think ne never before in the history of this country we had a government with a political will to help the tech innovation ecosystem like this government. It started by resignating and expanding the mandate of our ministry to cover digital economy. That means the government understands the technology is beyond just technology. It can improve a lot. And this is not only the government. 
all of us, before we understand the technology wrongly, we look at it from the eyes of consumers. Where can we buy it? How much does it cost? Or from the eyes of capitalists, how can I exploit it? How can I build businesses around it? So we need to look at it from the eyes of citizens. What does it mean for better society? Or how does it change the way we live? Because this is the only way we can address this challenge. Because technology is beyond whatever we think. It is no more business or commercial. It is political. Because the technology we have today can limit you from what you do. That means it has power. Those that control it exact power over us. The right codes, rules that we must obey to use that technology. And the people in government also, they are using that technology for their day-to-day -day activities. That means the technology can be used for recruitment. We have seen it in the case of Amazon, where technology is, digit, uh, is gender bias. So if you look at this, this is beyond technology or business. It is a political question that can address who can get job under what condition. And also, the technology can profile you about your credit worthiness and a lot. That means the people designing the code or the technology, they are beyond just software engineers. They need to see themselves as a social engineers because that technology is used to deliver justice on us. It's only our laws or our legislation that is allowed to create rules and regulations in a society or decide who gets what under what conditions. But today, technology is doing that. So we need to look at it as beyond just a technology or as a commerce. So we should stop using commerce principles to it and apply political principles to it. That's what will help us to achieve a right regulation. So the government's role basically is to create an enabling environment through interventions in terms of laws, policies, and other things so that we can have a safer digital space for all and enabling environment for you to thrive and as an entrepreneur. So the government, we discuss about the startup bill which has been passed at the National Assembly. That will help us solve a lot of challenges discussed at the panel session. Like we talked about the tech union under the startup bill, there is a National Council for Technology and Innovation, which is going to be chaired by Mr. President and all regulators. They are going to be members and the tech ecosystem will be represented there. And also there is provision for labeling. We, we hear about that. We don't want to register, we don't want to do this and that. But that also is important for our business as well. We all want to access funding and the people that will invest need to do their own due diligence. And sometimes some of us want grants from the government. So the government also needs to know you to give you that grant. And sometimes you need government's intervention 
when there is a problem of uh, police harassing you or other things. For government to intervene, also the government needs to know you. So that law provides that labeling. There is a provision for incentivization and so many other things. And also, just early this year, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy laid a delegation to here in Lagos. We met the tech ecosystem in this hall where we discussed most of the pain points and how can government help you to thrive. And most of the pain points raised at that conversation was taken to the Federal Executive Council and the Federal Executive Council has approved to do, achieve three things. Firstly, we work with the FRSC to see how we can get more incentives for you. Secondly, to work with BPP to come up with a bimodal procurement process so that government can patronize you. And thirdly, how can we protect your IP and uh, patents? So the government is working on all this and the startup bill is going to consolidate that. So I believe with this kind of conversation, nothing will stop Nigeria from becoming a force to reckon when we talk about innovation in the world. And the government is a listening government, is ready to work with you. That's why we always come to you when you invite us. And we want you to reciprocate. A few weeks ago, we issued a code of practice. But many people in the ecosystem didn't read it, didn't contribute to it. We said we want to co-create. We don't want to create from our own offices. That's why we issued for public comments and inputs. So we still want you to go and look at it to see how you can, uh, how you can add your own contribution to make it a better law for us or regulation because we are using it as a stopgap. We are going to have a law on that very soon and we are going to work with you to achieve that. My belief is there are things you can do as an ecosystem and government cannot do. And there are things government can do, you cannot do. But together we can do greater things and make you proud. Thank you.